Today's topic is a bit more niche than uh, what I usually do. Uh, I want to talk about value in news and uh, how to calculate value in news under IFRS. The reason is that I recently had to calculate it for a consulting client and uh, it turned out that there's not a lot of information online and I really don't want to brag, but one of the top results in Google is actually a really simple article that I wrote a few years back on, on calculating value in news which means that there's definitely uh, a need for more information on the topic. That's why I wanna show you how the calculation principle works and also run through an Excel example with you so that you can really grasp the practical side of calculating value in use. Before we jump into Excel, I just wanna show you this uh, chart. This is a simplified view of the entire impairment consideration process that uh, you would go through when you're applying IIS 36. So you can pause here, read through that, and uh, maybe take a screenshot. But I'm gonna link to an article in the description that has this uh, explained step-by-step. -step. Under IIS 36, the recoverable amount of uh, an asset is the higher of its fair value, less cost to sell, and its value in use, which essentially represents the net worth of the assets or the cash generating unit. This approach follows the assumption that there are two ways we can generate a value out of an asset. We can either sell it, and then the value would be its uh, fair value minus the cost to incur to sell it, or we can use it to transfer benefits over to the business through additional revenues, or cost savings minus the incurred costs of uh, using the asset. Now let's open Excel and uh, take a look at an example. Here I have a forecast for my income statement and balance sheet for the next five years. And uh, we already have that. Uh, I'm not gonna go into detail on how to forecast uh, those two uh, elements. If you want, I'll link a video in the description that goes into a lot of detail on how to forecast financial statement. We need those to calculate our discounted cash flows. Next, we'll start uh, our calculation that I have here, section three, going to code it discounted cash flow calculation, and we'll start adding uh, different items here. First, I'm gonna use this uh, styling for my EBITDA, copy it using the format painter, and uh, to EBITDA, and uh, link it from up here. So this is our starting point. Next, we'll calculate an adjusted EBIT. So essentially, our idea is to get to profit or loss for the period, excluding the interest expense, our finance costs. Because for the discounted cash flow, we'll use the weighted average cost of capital as a discount rate, and this already includes our financing costs. So we want to exclude those. Uh, it, it's a bit technical this and uh, if you want to go into more detail on pre-tax versus post-tax figures uh, I'll link an article that uh, goes into detail and explains why we're doing it that way. So after my EBITDA I'll add my non-operating expense and my depreciation and amortization expense which will get me to copy that and activate this and this is going to be my EBIT adjusted. So I'm going to link those with uh, a negative sign. I want them to appear as positive. And uh, those will be my non-operating expenses. And my depreciation and amortization will be this up here. And my adjusted EBIT will be EBITDA minus those two. I can grab those and copy them over to the side. Next, we can calculate our income tax. And uh, for the purposes of this, let's say we have an estimated flat rate of 10%. Uh, now on this, fix it with F4, multiplied by my adjusted EBIT. Copy that to the side, format it a bit, and uh, this will give me, and just copy that down here. This will give me my net profit before interest spans. And uh, this, of course, will be this minus this. Copy it over to the side. And now we have our adjusted net profit. Next, in order to get to our free cash flow that uh, we can use for our DCF calculation, we need to start adjusting for some non-cash items. So, for example, uh, depreciation and amortization is a non-cash item. So I'm going to adjust it here. 
amortization. Then I'm also gonna adjust capital expenditures. And uh, we'll also look at our uh, working capital. So we'll have our receivables, inventory, payables. This will give us our networking capital. This will give us our change in working capital from year to year. And that way we can calculate our free cash flow. Okay, now that we have the structure, let's go over and uh, calculate all those. So depreciation and amortization, just link it from up here. Then for my capital expenditures, usually just ask for like a capital budget or something like that and just bring them over as uh, like values. Then for my receivables, inventories and payables, you need to go into 24 into the previous years and just copy paste the amounts from there but uh, for the rest you can just link them so receivables will be trade receivables plus intercompany plus other receivables copy that over to the side then for inventory we'll have raw materials plus finished goods copy that over to the side and for payables we'll have our trade payables plus our other liabilities copy that over and then our networking capital format it a bit will be equal to my receivables plus my inventories minus my payables copy that over to the side and add the change in my working capital will be 25 minus the previous year i'm gonna bring that over to the side and then we can calculate our uh, free cash flow We'll start with our net profit. We'll add back our depreciation because it's a non-cash expense. We'll take out our uh, capital expenditures because this is cash we'll be spending. And we'll also take out the change in working capital. The idea here is that our working capital increased. So essentially our cash decreased. For example, if, you, if your receivables increase, you didn't collect them. So cash decreases. So minus this and that way we get our free cash copy that over to the side next i'm just gonna copy this down here let's call that discounted period and uh just gonna have one it's gonna be this plus this and uh have just the, the number of the period our discount factor will be our weighted average cost of capital and uh, I'm going to have that at 9.5%, which is something that you have to calculate for uh, your uh, company or the company you're doing this analysis for. And uh, then we'll just calculate factor. And uh, this uh, factor we can then use to discount the cash flows to get to their present value. So our factor will be 1 over 1 plus my discount uh, rate to the power of the number of the period and let's ferment this a bit copy it over to the side and uh, the whole idea here is to take into consideration the time value of money concept so something that we'll get in five years costs 64 percent of its value in five years right now similarly something that we're only going to get in one year costs more we can then calculate the present value of uh, cash flows and i just want to format that in this way and this will be essentially the free cash flow multiplied by the discount factor and then the total present value of our interim cash flows we're seeing interim because remember we still have to calculate our terminal value here so this thing will be the sum of those now that we have our present value for the next five years, the present value of the expected uh, free cash flows discounted for time value of money concept at the current uh, time, we can move along and start calculating our terminal value. I'm going to copy that together up here, paste it here, and uh, just see number four, terminal value calculation. By the way, if you're really into Excel, you should definitely check out my Excel add-in called Minty Tools for Excel. It's a collection of useful tools that I developed. It's essentially what I would have liked to have 
back when I was starting in FPNA. You can take a look at the first link in the description down below and uh, if you decide to purchase it, you'll be supporting me and the channel and also don't forget to use the 50% discount code that's in the description down below. Here we'll have our discount rate, gonna be our WAC and uh, also our growth factor. So this is uh, G, the expected growth in perpetuity uh, for the calculation of a uh, terminal value. And this will give us, let me copy the formatting from this. This will give us our terminal value and uh, below it we'll have our discounted terminal value. We have to discount it because remember, we'll, we're calculating this terminal value in five years time. So we still have to calculate it to the present day. So here we'll again have 9.5% and here we'll have 2.5% expected growth. In order to calculate the terminal value, we need to fill out this column here. So let me grab this one and uh, for terminal value, our EBITDA will be this multiplied by one plus growth factor. This is how much we expect this to grow. Format this, I'm just gonna copy the formatting from here. Then for our non-operating expenses, I can see that uh, they're growing a bit, but not as much as revenue. So I'm just gonna keep them the same. And for depreciation and amortization, I'm gonna use the same growth factor, one plus 0.5%, format that, and uh, that would let me calculate my adjusted EBIT. Then uh, income tax is the same thing, and net profit before interest is the same thing as well. For my depreciation and amortization, just link it from up there. And uh, here for my capital expenditures, when we're talking about perpetuity, we assume that uh, we'll only do essentially replacement capex. So for the purposes of this calculation, I usually just set it the same as uh, the depreciation and amortization, assuming that uh, in terms of perpetuity, it's a good proxy. For the change in working capital, I'm just gonna grab this change and uh, grow it with my growth percentage. And then I can just copy this calculation over to the side to get my free cash flow for my terminal value calculation. And the way we calculate terminal value is we get the free cash flow in the terminal here and divide it over the discount rate minus the growth factor. So this is our terminal value. So this assumes that at this fifth year, at this point, the entire business for its entire lifespan is worth 77.6 million. However, we need to discount that and we need to discount it by the discount factor at the last year because it's five years from now. So we get 49.3 uh, million. Now that we have this, we can do our value in use calculation. Copy that, five value in use calculation. And uh, here we'll have our DCF, our terminal value. And uh, then let me copy this uh, for the formatting. We'll have indicated value in use. So my DCF is this present value of interim cash flows and my terminal value is the discounted terminal value and the indicated value in use is the sum of those. So essentially we'll generate 5.5 million cash in the next five years and then additional 49 in perpetuity. Another thing that uh, I usually add to uh, those uh, value in use calculations is a uh, sensitivity analysis. It's a good thing to see how uh, this result would be influenced by using a different discount rate or growth factor, making sure that uh, a small change in any of those percentages wouldn't result in a huge swing in our result. So here, let's construct a table. I'm gonna have the growth to the side. Here, I'm gonna have the value that we're doing this for. Let me just add uh, some borders around it. Then I'll need five of those to have my weighted average cost of capital. And uh, here in the middle, I'm gonna say 9.5%. And for each of those, 
I'm gonna say the previous one minus 0.5 percent okay and uh, here I'm gonna do the same but I'm gonna be adding 0.5 percent for two more and for my growth I'm gonna have 2.5 percent and this will be this minus 0.5 percent and here I'll have same plus 0.5 percent so I can grab all those add a border add a border to those so those are my changing assumptions essentially so we're calculating with 9.5 and 2.5 and I want to see how this value will change as we adjust those different so before we build this table we'll be using those two as our references for the two inputs and uh, I want to make sure that this links down here. I'm going to link this to the discount factor down here. So that way, essentially, if I change this, everything else uh, changes up here. I'm going to grab this, go to a uh, data, what if analysis, data table. My row input cell would be this and my column input cell would be my growth factor. Hit OK and uh, it added all the numbers I need. And just to make sure that you selected uh, the row and column cells correctly, just make sure that this here in the middle, 9.5 and 2.5, is the same as what we have here. Okay, I can then select all those at the border and uh, perhaps do a conditional formatting and uh, do some uh, form of a scale to illustrate how uh, things change. Purpose of this analysis is to see if we get some like crazy outliers, which we don't have here. We just format that to uh, be next to the table. And that's our sensitivity analysis. And this is how to do a value in use calculation in Excel. Now that you know how to calculate value in use, another thing that might be really useful in terms of uh, expanding your knowledge around reporting is learning how to prepare consolidated financial statements. And I want to show you the basics in this video up here. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you in this video.